when we're not doing things assessment based first or strength based first or looking at a physical um, assessment or just a physical looking at it from, with that scope it's like what the fuck are we doing yeah I see kids that are 10 years old I saw a kid in the cage today backpedaling and he fell down twice and he's about to get a pitching lesson on mechanics and the and next like, thing somebody said to him was, we got to work on your front leg brace. This yeah. kid can't even run backwards. You can't run backwards. He's not strong enough to run backwards. Right. How are we going to talk to him about a front leg brace? <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. What, are <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, and it's like, nobody's thought that, nobody before now has really thought about that. And it's like, to me, it's, 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 it's elementary. It's, you, <laughs> you said it already earlier. You got to build the engine. The other analogy yeah. is like shooting a cannon out of a rowboat. It doesn't work. You need a sturdy base. 100%. Where everything you know, goes. And we're telling these to... kids. And I think that leads into why we see participation go south. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as age goes up in baseball, you just see they get older and participation is going like this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, it's probably because we've had this kid trying to do these specialized movements while moving fast and hitting a target on this slope like this, when he's not even strong or coordinated or anything like that, I would get pretty frustrated and not want to yeah. go participate in that. Oh, that's a great point. Either frustrated or you know something goes wrong, right? If they're not dissipating forces correctly, and right. their kinetic linking isn't right, then the force has to go somewhere. And, yeah. and boom, now we're injured. And then they end up on our table. Yeah, and now it's like when you're 12 years old and every time you throw a ball, your ball hurts, or your ball hurts, your arm hurts when you, every time you throw a ball. <laughs> um, it's like, I don't want to go throw the ball. Right. I'm going to go shoot the ball or kick the ball or mm -hmm. something else. And it's like those sports – like soccer and football, they're a lot less specialized. They're a lot less, um, hey, you got to do these movements so correctly. It's just like, go run fast. Mm -hmm. Go hit that guy as hard as you can. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think if baseball was taught like that at a young age, I'm sure you guys had seen studies on kids that are trained that way. Quite a bit. I mean, that, that's actually something that I think TPI has did a really good job with Greg Rose. I know yeah. Greg Rose is on base you now, which yeah. I know you've done right. and, and we've done. Um, and they, they've got some phenomenal stuff, but what, was, what the research was showing is that that whole concept of, in, especially in America, the way that we teach youth sports, and of course TPI is a golf-based program, right. Tyson yeah. Performance Institute is, about, is a golf-based program, but the idea was, you know, hit the ball towards the flag. If you say that to someone, that immediately is going to slow down the swing yeah. because now they're aiming it, yeah. which would be the same in baseball. Like, hit that target. Well, if I'm going to hit the target, I'm not throwing it as hard as I can 100%. just by default, right? right? So that's what are you training? If that's Are we training a guy to throw 68 but hit the target every time? That skill doesn't scale. That doesn't. Right. That, that's not good <laughs> past the age of thirteen. That ain't gonna work for you. Right. So first thing, if we're gonna if we're gonna be competitive in the sport, if that's what we're trying to do, is teach competition and 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 ability to kind of step up and use your body effectively. Let's teach you how to do that. Yeah. How to use your body effectively yeah. first. Generate force and power. Learn how to throw it more than sixty eight. Hit seventy five. Mm -hmm. Hit eighty. And hopefully we kind of bring that target down a little bit during that process as well. And I, th yeah. I think you think those things go together for sure. I remember a, a kid when I was in, a little guy playing baseball, and I think I was sixth grade at the time, and I faced a guy who was a future major, major leaguer. We went to high school together for the next seven years, a big left-handed kid through about 96, ended up drafted by the Orioles. I remember in the batter's box, I was in the back corner, you know, like this thing, yeah. like, because he was throwing heat in sixth grade, and I'm like, and it ain't, no one knows where it's going. Right. You know, it's like watching Charlie Sheen in Major League. Like, we, <laughs> no one knows where this is going. Yeah. Yeah. But he was throwing hard, and, you know, obviously he, he made it and, and, and did well for himself. Uh, not well enough because he didn't get the target dialed in quite right. good enough. But because yeah. that's that's what's incredible now is what these guys are hitting. But you know, anyway. it takes both. But I think too, it's like why 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 do we never look at it from the standpoint of we always tell guys that they're going to get better at hitting the target by slowing down. How do we know telling them to maybe speed up and have a little bit more intent? They might organize better for the task at hand, and they yeah. might actually hit that target. Yep. You know, but nobody yes. thinks about it like that. It's like slow down, control it, right. and it's like if you pattern that enough times, that's what it's going to be. You're just going to learn gonna how to be slow. slow. And yeah, sorry, when you're 18 years old and your career's about to end in high school, we can't develop that because we miss that window. Yep. What you guys both said comes back to a type of cueing, right? From a movement standpoint, it comes mm -hmm. back to external or environmental cues, which we know from the research exhaustively in yep. the research that that's the best way to do it. Yep. And that's something that in baseball, particularly as a sport, at least when I was growing up, was not used. It yep. was very much like 
see the ball, watch the ball, get uh -huh. your hands to here, move your feet to here, and it, yeah. was, it was very technical. Mm -hmm. And what you guys do is completely different. It's very much task-based, oh, environment-based. Yeah. That's what we tried, you know, externally. We try to keep the focus externally. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, going back to the young kid, it's like if I'm trying to make him aware of what his body's doing in space, but he can't even do the things with his body that he doesn't even know what his body's gonna do when he starts to move it. Yeah. It's like, how can I ask him to be aware of that? It's just, it's just so tough, you know? Yeah.